I'm Clinton. I'm going to make a little short video to show some drills. These drills are meant to be practiced with sword and shield. It could also be done with an axe and shield. Just real quick about what these drills are for. These drills are not meant to be showing a fencing technique or a sparring technique. You could literally think of these drills as like push-ups and pull-ups for sword fighting or fighting with a round shield. They're meant to develop hand and forearm strength for your fighting. So why do that? Um, it's really important that when we're fighting that we're doing a lot of connection with our blows, that we're fighting through our body, with our core, with our legs, that we're moving in a nice functional flow. So we're, we're recruiting all of the body as one efficient movement. But that being said, there's something specific that's going on with um, weapon fighting, I think. Um, and my friend Christopher, who showed me these drills, he actually agrees as well that there's a lot happening with the grip and the forearm muscles. So we need to train the endurance and strength of these parts of our body so that when we do fight and we do spar, that we're able to have more control over the shield and the sword and that we're not giving in to fatigue. Because we think that when you have good grip strength and a lot of endurance in your hand and forearm, that you're able to be more confident with your blows. And when you're more confident, you're more accurate, and then you're able to be a more efficient fighter. So the drills are just that. They're basically fitness drills for the sword and the shield. Um, normally, once you get to where you're doing these for a while and, you're, and they're not hard for you, you would hold both implements, the weapon and the shield, the whole time. But in the beginning, they're going to be kind of pumping your forearm and hand up a lot. So we're going to switch in the beginning to where we'll do the sword maneuvers with the shield down and vice versa. That way we're giving our offhand a chance to recover in between sets. So I'll put the shield down for now and we'll go through the sword maneuvers. Now the one theme that's going to be in all of these cuts is like we've done the fives, we've done the fives for years. That's not necessarily what we're doing but you're going to recognize a lot of the cutting angles being very similar to those fives. The main difference is when I'm cutting with these blows that I'm actually reaching out to a great distance. I don't have the cut hugged to my body like I'm cutting here in a short range. I'm purposely going to be cutting out far with each blow. The idea is that I'm sending the weapon to get that ideal extreme measure like if we were cutting with only the tip of the weapon. So from a side view this would be like a short range cut that's very common in how we spar but what I'm looking for is sending the cuts in a more longer cutting arc, right? The idea too with these drills to really, to work the hand and the forearm is that the grip is relaxed when it's back here in this passive position, in this passive guard, but as it sends out, you're really squeezing the grip at the end, but right at the end only. So. There's going to be sections of cutting and then shield. We'll do the first set of cuts. You'll recognize these angles. I'm only going to be cutting, sending to the primary 45 degree, and then the second cut. So once again, slow here, here. You'll notice that when I'm cutting, I'm sending the cut out far and trying to get as much range and really squeeze my hand and forearm muscles at the end of this cut. Yes, I'm still using my body, and my core, but I am focusing on the squeeze. Notice that the cuts in between, even though I'm making two angles, that I'm cutting, I'm recovering the blade, and then sending it out again. I'm not cutting, leaving it out there, and then crossing the face. I'm trying to train the habits of not crossing the face in between cuts. Yeah, this is cut one. The ideal numbers you want to do, I think in the beginning, is somewhere between 15 and 20. Now let's uh, real quick talk about how we count them. With all these drills, we're always counting them where if you do one side and then the other, that counts as one. So when we do these and I say 15 to 20, we're counting them that way. Yeah? There's the first one. Good. Now we'll switch to the sword or the shield. The forearm does get pumped up. That's why we're switching back and forth. The first shield exercise is meant to develop the forearm and shoulder and grip. It's easier to see from the side. 
you'll notice that when I have it here, it's nice and loose, and all we're doing is moving it forward and squeezing the grip at the end. Okay? So you would do 20 repetitions as so, squeezing the grip at the end. From the front, same thing, I have it here. This is exercise number two. You do 20 of those as well. The numbers on these, you want to keep them kind of low, like 15 to 20 in the beginning, but if you do them every day, the whole set of drills without the talking would only take about maybe 10, 12 minutes. So start with these low numbers. You don't want to overdo it. These will actually condition your hand and forearms, but if you overdo it, you may um, bring on a wrist or elbow aggravation. So make sure that, that you're starting with low numbers. 15 of each is good. And then if you do it every day for a week, you could maybe add five more to each, to each session. So the second uh, cutting form, it's gonna be the same two angles like we were doing earlier, but we're gonna add in a misdirection or what I believe is called a mullinet. So that would be when I start my cut in one angle and then at the very end, I would break and change my wrist to cut the opposite angle. Again, real slow, here, and then breaking to cut the opposite. It's hard to notice the difference when you do it slow, but when you do it fast, it's more like, fine. It's very much activating that hand, wrist, and forearm training that grip strength. You can do 20 of these as well, each side counting as one. Don't forget to breathe. Good. So 20 of those. Uh, next shield exercise. With this one, we're working the hand and forearm again, as most of these are. Uh, the best way to show this is without the shield. I'm going to be pretending I'm holding my round shield. I'm up in a neutral, relaxed position. I'm going down with my elbow up with a hard squeeze at the bottom. And then it's relaxed and I'm coming up with a hard squeeze at the top. So it's down and then up. Down and then up. With the shield, we'll do it from a couple different angles. We're from down to up, squeezing at the bottom and at the top, training that hand and forearm strength. Yeah. From the side, you can see it a little better, going down, up. Same thing, 20 of those, down, then up, counts as one. All right, next sword exercise is two different angles. All of these drills, when I'm cutting with the sword, Let's uh, make an uh, observation that my opposite leg is always the one forward. I know that often when we fight, we're changing our steps quite uh, spontaneously, but for the purpose of the drill, let's keep the shield leg or opposite of the weapon leg forward. In this case for me as a right-handed swordsman, that would be my left leg forward. So the next cut would be a rising 45 cut. You could, it's not appropriate to Western style, but the idea is that you would be cutting with the tip of the sword like to your opponent's chin, right? So the, the other counter motion to that, or what could also be considered a mullinet, would be the falling cut of the opposite angle. So we're starting the rising cut to the chin, and then it breaks at the wrist, and then falls through what would be your opponent's shoulder. Again, here, here breaking at the wrist. When it's done more fluently, it's like this. Right? Rising, turning at the wrist, falling. Again. Sweating. Warm in Texas. Rising, falling. Nice and smooth. You would do 20 of these. Both cuts counting as one. Okay. The, the benefit, like I said earlier, is that you add this to your practice for 10 minutes, 12 minutes a day, you're going to get this increased hand strength and arm strength, and it's really going to be obvious when you're doing longer trainings. 
and you're able to stay confident and accurate without feeling that fatigue or maybe like that feeling like your forearms are really pumped and full like you'll be more relaxed because you have more reserves of strength uh, the next drill for the shield I'm going to hold my weapon hand up always kind of reminding myself that my guard should be active yeah I don't want to relax with my arm down so like I would be holding my weapon here and now we're going to uh, use how the shield pivots on the center axis with some twisting maneuvers so it's going to be extreme from one side to the other back and forth counting as one but what I don't want it to do is we don't want the shield to slap into the into the arms we're using our grip to control that rotation and stop it at the end without slapping so it'll look more like this holding this here training that grip training that forearm and of course the core and legs are working in this too a little bit of a slap there that's what you don't want and that would be for 20 counting both directions as well uh, the last cut this cut is one that's more a kind of a single sword version of what you would do with a long sword this kind of pivoting over the high axis like you see long sword fighters do we're going to take the same idea and we're going to do it with a single sword the idea is normally we're cutting with the lead edge of our sword with our knuckles forward but we're going to relax the grip because we're trying to train a different part of our wrist to where the grip is more flat. It's okay to have the thumb on the grip. I would really try to avoid going over the cross too much. You don't want to get into that habit. Um, but I am holding the sword from this side grip. So from this point, I'm working a cut to a very high line where it's coming all the way around. And you notice that my elbow alignment is quite center to finish this movement. And then to the opposite side, right here. This is really working the hand, wrist, and forearm. Okay, real slow again. Here, and then coming around to the opposite. When it's done more fluid, it looks more like this. That's counting as one. With each cut, just like every cut, I'm trying to go out as far as possible. From a side view, that means that I'm trying to have a long cut. I don't want it to be really hugged in my face. So when I'm doing this, or when you're doing this, strive to make this as long of a cut as possible to really engage that hand and wrist control. Same for the opposite. I don't have it here. I'm not doing it here. To get that extra bit of fitness, I'm moving the cut out further, right? That's what's working the hand more. And again, seeing it in real tempo here. Nice hand and wrist exercise. Good. So that's the last sword maneuver. This shield exercise is probably the most challenging one as far as endurance of the arm and grip go. You've probably seen it from uh, an example of it from Roland Varchetta on his uh, Dimicator um, publication site. But we're going to go ahead and show it again here just so you could practice it. Um, the idea is that we're going to be operating in two lines of movement with the shield. A high line and a low line. But let me show it without the shield because there's some important things about how the arm is working. On the high line, I'm coming over and you'll notice my elbow's out and I'm, and I'm almost pointing. That is, I'm pointing with the stick of the spear, or the stick of the shield, thinking of it like a one-handed spear. You can almost imagine the one-handed head right here right so as I go on that high line it's like I'm thrusting with the stick point of the shield yeah and that's the high line with the elbow up when you're making the low line from high and then the low the elbow comes center again and you're pressing out this way right through here 
through here. We're still thinking of the point of the stick like a spear. I've done my high, and now I've moved into the low. Right? From the front, high, and now the low. Always thinking like I'm using a thrust with the steel, uh, the stick of the shield. Yeah. Squeezing the grip always with these at the end, developing that hamstring. Same thing with this, that would count as uh, you would do 20 in the beginning, maybe 15, depending on where your fitness is at. And the count is high, then low equals one for 20 of those. Same for each exercise. Um, that's it for those. I think if you add them every day, you could knock them out in like eight to 10 minutes. And then maybe the next week, if you've done them consistently, you could add five and so on. And then after a couple of months, you're really gonna start noticing how these drills are aiding in your hand, forearm, and uh, strength and endurance both. Thanks.